So hi everyone, my name is Nikhil I'm currently a secondary food technology student at the University of Kimo Technology and in today's video, I'll be talking about the commercial dairy farming as well as the livestock sector in India and the scope of commercial dairy farming in India in the future. So let's just start it. The livestock sector is critically important component of Indian agriculture and provide its growth and sustainability to Indian GDP. The livestock sector contributes 27% to agricultural GDP in India. The share of the milk alone to livestock output is about 68%. For example, we are getting the output of 100% from livestock. 68% of that 100% is only of milk alone. The nation's milk production has increased at a CAGR of 6.2% from 14 million metric ton in 2014 to 210 million metric ton in 2021. In India, cattle and buffalo rearing has been an integral part of the rural mass socio-economic economic and cultural uh, fabric since time immemorial. Like the people that are living in the rural areas, so their main income of source is the rearing of the cattle and buffaloes. Their income is depend on the rearing of the cattle and buffaloes. And dairy animals provide nutrient rich food products, drought power, dung as they do organic manure, domestic fuel, hides and skin and are a great uh, regular source of income for rural households. In developing countries like India, the rearing of livestock, that is livestock are reared with multiple objectives. Like when we compare developing countries with developed countries, so in case of the India and the developing countries, we can say that the farmers are rearing the livestock only, uh, not only for one output, they are having multiple outputs, multiple objectives are there. But in case of developed countries, there is only one output known as profitability. So they are aiming in case only in terms of profitability. We are having multiple objectives with the rearing of animals. The Indian breeds of livestock are suitable to tropical climatic conditions and are also resistant to many tropical diseases, heat stresses. They also need less water, can perform efficiently under high temperature, under less, under the availability of less water and they can survive on local grasses and different things. And the indigenous cattle can also be turned into high producers if you provide them good amount of feed, good quality of feed as well as the right amount of environment. Indigenous cattle and buffaloes are generally require low maintenance. Thus the impact of climate change will be minimal on low and medium producing animals as compared to high yielding animals. So basically the impact of the climate change will, change will be less on the indigenous cattle rather than crossbreeds or the any uh, cattle which is being brought here from any other countries. And if you talk about the bovine population the milk production of India, that India has the largest bovine population in the world and ranks first among the world's milk producing nations. As per the basic animal husbandry statistics, India has about 56.7% of the world's buffaloes in first position and about 19% of the cattle in second position in the world and India has a large genetic diversity of livestock contributing to the nutritional security of the people with a total 212 breeds including 53 for cattle, 24 buffaloes and 37 for goat breeds. Although India has only 2.4% of world's area but it is home to 17% and 11% of the global human and livestock population. And India is the largest milk producing country in the world with milk production of 220.78 million metric ton in 2021 which accounts for 23% of the total world milk production with 302.79 million metric ton. So you can imagine how much of share of India is there in case of the milk production on the world map. However, productivity is low in our country. Average milk produ production per year per cow in the USA, Sweden, Denmark and other developed countries is around 7,500 kg. But in case of India, it, is, it only has reached only up to the 1,200 kg per cow per year. However, our system of rearing animal is different and there are reared with multiple objectives as compared to the developed countries. As I talked earlier, like we rear animals for multiple objectives and their single their objective is profitability. So they are having big farms running on the only one objective to maximize the profitability of the dairy farms. So in order to, if you wish to establish a well equipped uh, commercial dairy farm, so you, you must know the analysis of Indian dairy sector. That is the constant and the sustainable growth of the livestock sector despite limited investment from private and public sectors. Itself shows the strength of this sector. No one is investing as much as other sectors in this sector. Although we, we are not investing heavily in this sector, but yet this sector is growing very fastly despite limited investment. Livestock genetic resources with high diversity in India will become handy to utilize environments uns unsuitable for crop agriculture and to respond to change in production systems, impending climate change and the emergence of new diseases and the market demand. The low production cost compared to other countries in this sector is another remarkable strength which holds uh, the the livestock sector in India and India is the world's largest and leading buffalo germplasm holder. The different production systems like zero input, low output, low input, moderate output, 
intensive input high output so these are the characteristics of indian livestock production system there is a huge internal demand for milk and the milk products and india is surrounded by the countries that are milk deficient so we are having a huge potential for the export export of the milk and the milk products to the neighboring countries how you are presently the indian dairy sector is facing the challenges of low productivity with a huge population of milk animals then then next slight sexual maturity a wide gap between the desired and existing intercalving periods higher susceptibility of cross breeds to uh, various this is a slow quality of milk that the high somatic cell count as well as the low snf in few cows as well as the shortage of feed and fodder uh, shortage of the quality of germplasm and continuous shrinkage of the grazing land we are having the less area 2.4 percent of the world's area and having the large population of human population as well as the bovine population so in that case the shrinkage of the grazing land is continuously taking place is there as well as the late sexual maturity that is 4 14 days instead of 6 but in india we are having in india we are having 4 14 days of sexual maturity than other countries which is having 365 days the opportunities in the dairy sector include technology driven production enhancement in low producing animals and value addition to the meal the dairy farmers are increasingly focusing on production efficiencies and, and cost control to the increasing scale of operation and adoption of uh, modern technology tools excessive grazing pressure on marginal and small community lands has resulted in almost complete degradation of the land excessive grazing can lead to the uh, degradation of the land and indiscriminate crossbreeding uh, for raising the productivity of the uh, milk production can lead to the disappearance of the indigenous cattle so if you are not uh, limiting the crossbreeding of the animals indigenous cattle with the cross in with the other uh, breeds so there is a there is a risk of uh, disappearing the indigenous cattle which can be a very great uh, problem for the dairy industry in the future because the indigenous cattle are well adapted to the conditions that are here well adapted to the, adapted to the climatic conditions that are here in india changing climate depleting natural resources with associated losses in production reproduction and health in the dairy animals is also another kind of threat and the demand for the milk and milk products if you wish to establish a well equipped uh, commercial dairy farm so is there a demand for the milk and milk products in india okay that is approximately 46 percent of the milk produced is consumed either at the producer level or sold to the customers in rural areas and only 20.3 percent of the milk produced is handled by the organized cooperative societies or the sector and 10.2 percent of the milk is handled by organized private sector and while the remaining milk is handled by the unorganized sector by value addition to the milk through various products the income of the farmers or the commercial dairy farmers could be increased or enhanced as the cost of the ingredients declines and the profitability increases Increases. The greatest challenge of millennium in the dairy sector is to produce many fold increase in the production of the quality milk and the milk products to meet the requirements of exponentially growing population. With the same resources that is the base that is the land we are having the, for the grazing of animals as well as the water. So with having limited resources we have to counterpart or we have to feed the growing population the same land with the same water. So we have to increase the efficiency of the animals to produce the milk by different technologies. The dairy sector is involving in response to surging demand for food due to population growth, increased income, economic growth, urbanization, and different changing lifestyles of human beings. And there is a huge internal demand for dairy products and also the India is surrounded by the milk deficient countries as we talked earlier. So they are deficient of milk as well as the milk products. Thus we are having a huge potential for export and for productivity enhancement it is essential to have a multi-pronged strategy involving technology retention that is the research technology dissemination that is the extension of the technologies technology users that is the farmers that is the dairy farmers which are producing the milk or they are rearing the cattle as well as the supporting mechanism that is input supply giving the credit to the farmers as well as the quality improvement through the technological interventions. And in the era of world trade organization, a vast amount of entrepreneurship opportunities exist for the dairy farmers as well as the as well as the professionals that are engaged in the dairy sector. And in commercial dairy farming, it is desirable to get one calf per year. However, in our country, the calving period is about 414 days as compared to the other countries which are having a calving period, calving period of 365 days. Under commercial dairy farming, it is absolutely necessary to provide better management for optimal 
expression of the genetic potential and to have a sustainable dairy production. With the rise in demand for hydric milk and milk products, higher scope exists for commercializing the livestock enterprises and in various other areas of the livestock sector for employment generation. So there is a tremendous scope for promoting rural cattle and buffalo rearing in India into commercial micro enterprises through entrepreneurship development programs and favorable government policies. Apart from rearing uh, dairy animals and the dairy processing industry, vast scope of generating additional income and employment exists in the dairy industry. Like the milk processing units, organic milk production units which can be harnessed for increasing employment and the farmer's income. In India, the demand for the milk products in percentage volume is increasing over the years. About 19% of the milk by volume is used as ghee followed by paneer, khawa, curd and yogurt and many different types of products that are being produced from the milk. And in order to get higher profits under commercial dairy farming, in addition to the sale of the milk, it is desirable to produce the milk products, particularly those products which could be easily made and can be highly profitable. Like we can, we will, uh, that we will be requiring less money to produce the food or the product of the milk and we can sell that food product at higher value and can gain maximum profits. And one more topic is important here that is the dairy animal waste management like the waste that being produced by the animals can also be a source of income. Like in the commercial dairy farming the waste management is essential from an economic environmental and empowerment angle. Animal waste management involves production, collection, storage, process and utilization. Improved utilization of manure like feed production for fish and in aquaculture, energy that is the methane gas or the algal growth as fertilizer will also help to improve the profitability. Dung is essential to uh, vermiculture and organic agriculture. Animal wastage like dead skin is utilized for the leather industries. Blood and bones could be used efficiently in the bone mills and the blood mills. Efficient uses of animal waste using appropriate technological interventions will earn the revenue for farmers and reduce ill effects to the environment, the green the greenhouse gas emissions, all those different things. And there is a lot of scope for entrepreneurship development in the area of animal waste management. And the conclusion that we can do from this topic is that the productivity of cattle and the buffaloes is low as compared to the developed countries. Okay, and the milk productivity of indigenous cattle and buffaloes could be enhanced sustainably by adoption of various modern technologies for selection and faster multiplication of genetically superior germ plasm and adoption of improved animal management strategies. Like if we <coughs> provide the indigenous cattle with right right amount of at the, the right quality of feed and the right quality of environment, so it is obvious that we can increase the efficiency of those animals rather than crossbreeding them. And there exists a tremendous scope for commercial dairy farming using milch breeds for, of indigenous cattle, crossbreed cattle and the buffaloes. And there is an increasing demand for the goat milk also. Thus, there is an opportunity for commercial goat farming using milch breeds of goat. So that's it for today guys. If this video has added a good value to life or if you learn something new from the food technology, dairy industry, dairy technology, then please consider to subscribe to the channel. Until next time, stay tuned, stay safe, stay healthy. See you soon in the next one. Bye-bye.